My name is Tony. I'm the co-founder of Stony Apps. Uh, we're a development studio based in Virginia. Uh, we focus on mobile and web application development. This week, you guys are going to hear a lot of great talks about machine learning for good, about how machine learning and artificial intelligence can not only inform but uplift society. But in order to do that, data scientists and machine learning practitioners need the right tools. And out of the entire machine learning workflow, from building machine learning models to training machine learning models to deploying them, it's oftentimes that last piece, that last mile of model deployment uh, that is the hardest for machine learning practitioners. And today I wanna to talk to you guys about uh, how and why we should remedy that. So I wanna start with this quote by Francois Cholet, who is the creator of Keras. Keras is one of the most popular open source deep learning frameworks in the world right now. And he talks about how um, for deep learning to reach its full potential in order for it to solve as many problems as it can solve, that we need to radically democratize it. And while we have machine learning frameworks like Scikit-Learn, uh, Keras with TensorFlow and PyTorch, that have done a great job of making machine learning model development accessible, you never really know how your model is gonna work until it's out in the wild. And so here we have an example of a popular AI-based API um, served by Google Cloud uh, that's clearly suffering from uh, racial bias. And the idea is that in order to identify these problems and apply the solution sooner, that if we can get the machine learning models into people's hands quicker into small test groups, into big test groups, um, we can find these problems and iterate on our models as fast as possible. Um, and so we asked the question, what would democratized deployment tools look like? And if we take up some real world examples, uh, then perhaps we can find a trend in how these kinds of tools uh, that serve the machine learning workflow tend to develop into a more democratized form. So I'm going to use a case study where we have a mobile app that enables users to take a picture of a plant or a flower, wherever they are, and receive the corresponding identification. Uh, this is like a popular app called PlantSnap. And say that we're going to build this model for Android and we're going to, uh, we're going to build this app in Android and we're going to build the machine learning model to serve this app. It'll be a, a image classification uh, model. We're going to build that in TensorFlow. And we're gonna build that in TensorFlow because right now TensorFlow is uh, the best supported machine learning development framework uh, for deployment. And I want you guys to note that the object of our detection, um, it doesn't have to be flowers. It could have been cars, animals, chest x-rays, but that the application itself in terms of the way that it functions um, and the way that it functions in the wild is relatively consistent. So as we go about the process of developing our image classification model, we're going to want to keep the machine learning workflow in mind from gathering and preparing training data to building and training our model to deploying that model at scale and finally integrating uh, that machine learning model into a user facing application in, in some way. And what's notable is that when you look at the steps of the machine learning workflow, when you look at a majority of these steps, um, each of them has become easier um, and more automated in some way. So from gathering and preparing training data, this used to be a very manual process. You'll go, you're gonna have to go out and find it and label the data yourself, or you're gonna hire somebody to do it, you know, perhaps outsource that. Nowadays, you can jump into Google dataset search, uh, look for any kind of image classification uh, data that you might need, and you're probably, you're likely to get some results. Bifrost AI serves the same, uh, solves the same problem. And if you're considering uh, augmenting and annotating uh, your data in any sort of novel way, there's visual tools like RoboFlow that can assist you with that process. Moving forward, you might even consider using synthetic data generators to create training data for your model. Um, if we jump into the next step, uh, building and training a TensorFlow model for image classification, just last year, you'd be looking at, you know, perhaps using a, a transfer learning uh, workflow where you're going to use a pre-trained model, customize it for um, 
flowers in this case, and that's going to take you hundreds of lines of code. This year, TensorFlow released a new experimental tool called Model Maker that reduces that entire process down to about five lines of code. Um, and if you're looking for a solution that doesn't require any code, uh, which is especially appealing to early practitioners, um, you can use tools like CreateML um, for, for uh, Mac devices or Teachable Machine uh, that's also created by Google that enables you to train and export machine learning models um, without uh, any code at all. And as we're looking at deploying our machine learning model uh, into production uh, and being able to scale that deployment, you guys might have looked at how, uh, how you can deploy your model behind a fast API endpoint and, or a Flask endpoint. Um, maybe serve that uh, endpoint up on Heroku or deploy that to your own EC2 server. Um, the code in terms of the design and development of that API, uh, the configuration with deploying that to a uh, scalable infrastructure, that's gonna cost you hundreds of lines of code. But there's new tools, Cortex, Bento, and ML that enable you to deploy machine learning models in under 100 lines of code to scalable infrastructure, Kubernetes clusters on, uh, AWS uh, or on Google Cloud Platform. And you also have additional tools like Google AutoML that can take you from training your machine learning model to deploying your machine learning model behind a REST API um, without any code at all. So they take you almost all the way through the entire machine learning uh, workflow uh, with no code. And the reason that this is important, that these, these more automated tools are important um, is because less than half a percent of the world's population knows how to code. And so when we're talking about democratizing access to machine learning, um, to machine learning tools uh, and the machine learning workflow, um, these no code tools are quite essential. And the only part of the workflow uh, where you're not benefiting from these kinds of low code and no code tools is an integration standpoint where if you're trying to integrate your machine learning API that you've now deployed into an Android application, you're either going to have to learn Android development or you're going to have to hire an Android developer. And that's either gonna be a time cost or a money cost that would better be applied towards uh, iterating on and improving your machine learning model. And so alternatively, even if you adjust the last part of this machine learning workflow, where instead of deploying your model behind an API, you might decide to deploy it directly onto, your, onto the uh, Android device, directly into the mobile app. This is gonna give you some nice benefits like privacy because the inference is happening locally, it's offline, so you need an internet connection to do the inference. Uh, you scale for free because not all of your predictions are happening uh, on a server cluster and it's much cheaper. Um, and you have the added benefit of being able to evolve your app to support real-time detection because you don't have the added network latency for inference. Even if you decide to make that adjustment, get all these added benefits, you're still going to face the challenge of integration, which even a uh, seasoned Android practitioner is going to have to deal with these issues such as uh, handling the camera API making sure that the pictures that you take with your phone are oriented correctly before they're uh, run through your machine learning model, making sure that your pre-processing pipeline, um, that you uh, execute on these images before they go through your model matches the pre-processing pipeline that you set up while you were training your, your model, because any variation in that pipeline is gonna give you different results uh, than you might expect. You have to consider whether or not um, you applied any kind of color filters doing that pre-processing. For example, if I'm working with the hello world of machine learning, the MNIST data set, I have to grayscale these images and invert them sometimes before I'm passing them through my model. And you also want to consider things like model updates. When my model uh, is improved, how do I get that to uh, my user's devices? I'm either going to have to upgrade the entire application, or I'm going to have to do an additional integration with a cloud hosting provider that can deliver my model update over the air. 
But ideally, you don't have to think about any of this. And if we're following the trend of other machine learning tools that service that workflow, we're, we should be looking for a no code tool that uh, can solve these challenges for us. And so what we're working on Estonia apps is, is uh, developing and providing such a tool, which I would like to show you guys a demo of now. So I'm going to jump into First, I'll give you guys a look at this uh, IPython notebook where I'm doing transfer learning for uh, uh, image classification model that deals with flowers, for example. So here we're looking at samples of our data. I'm going to pull in a pre-trained model from TensorFlow Hub. I'm going to train my model with a new classification head, deal with my accuracy and loss. And I'm going to finally export this model as a uh, TensorFlow Lite model. And so most of you guys have gone through this process. Now you're asking yourselves, well, what do I do now? Um, and so we're working on this platform where you can take your exported TensorFlow Lite model and labels and drag and drop them into your web browser. And I'm going to pull up an emulator of an Android app. Go ahead and refresh here. And what you get out of this process uh, without any additional code at all is a fully functioning mobile application that understands that, hey, I just gave you an image classification model. Can you provide me with an interface that can allow me to use this model uh, in the wild? So I can go ahead and create a new classification from, for example, pictures that I have already have on my phone. I can uh, take a photo with a camera, uh, which would work if this wasn't an emulator. I can have extra functionality provided for me. I can save this model, uh, save this prediction to my device. There's alternative scenarios where you might want to send that uh, prediction elsewhere for further evaluation when you're thinking about how to improve your model. So uh, I'm almost out of time, but I want to give you guys kind of like a sneak peek at uh, what a no code tool in this space might look like and how that can save you time. Um, if you're looking to get your mo models into people's hands quicker, um, you can, with one tap, uh, share your model um, if it's public. And it's going to auto generate a link that opens directly to your model. And so we believe that this is kind of going to be the future of at least no code. Uh, deployment uh, as like a deployment tool in your in the machine learning workflow. Um, and if you guys have any questions, just jump into uh, the follow up chat.